catastrophic failure. Oh my God. Just had to go get the skid steer off of sight just so I could try to make it right. All right, so if you guys follow my stories, you would have saw this, what happened. Sunday was yesterday. I was delivering a couple loads of clean fill to a site um, that I was dumping off before. On the last load, around 7 o'clock in the evening, put the box up. The load went off. I pulled out, and boom, the box come flying down. I couldn't see out any windows. There was hydraulic fluid everywhere shooting in the sky this thing come down fast as heck uh you you know could have been the cylinder blew out but i don't think so after just playing it back in my head i think it's the feed line going to the um going to the ram it feeds it and then when the ram comes back down it brings it back to the tank because i mean everything's empty the tank's empty this whole truck was saturated from this brake or every brakes everything you couldn't, you couldn't even get it that perfect if you tried to paint it on, how much got covered. Um, so last evening, brought it home, pressure washed everything off with the hot water pressure washer, which works awesome. Um, but now I'm in a dilemma. I got to get this box in the air because obviously there's no hydraulic power or anything. There's no fluid. Got to find out where this leak or blowout is if it is in the telescopic ram then that i will have to get assembled and brought to my machine shop and get fixed um if it's the line then i could take the line off but i gotta get this up in the air to diag diagnose it and um i was gonna strap it and try to get it up with the excavator but i don't want to obviously do any damage to the body with chains or anything like that and i do have straps but the only way i could really strap is up up through the headboard now and i think that's a lot of process so just got the skid steer got the forks here with my tilt bucket i can come in on the other side let's get over there so underneath the truck you can't see a thing you can't see what it could be or anything but i'm hoping i can get in here uh with a bottle jack and a four by four prop this up open up this c channel here then i can come in with my forks get under there and with my tilt attachment i could stay with the right angle all the way up until these drop out which i'll have these pins disconnected and once they get up to height they will lock and then i'll be safe to work under this and at least see what the heck is going on Hopefully the skid steer does the trick. I don't know if it has enough power to lift this up, but again, it's still obviously hooked up. The the weight, it's gonna be pivoting it. It's not gonna be try to lift the whole box, obviously. Let's get these off, set them there. Got all my cribbing over here. I think one four by four and one longer one will do. All right, got the four by four in. Gonna just jack it up, got the board under there and uh see what's happening here just gotta get it up a little bit so i can get the forks under here and she's starting to creep she's starting to go up there it is so that's what i'm looking for so i can get uh forks on there on the other side so we'll keep working this get it up and go from there all right, we got it there. Um, I could get a fork in there and there, and then once it comes up, slide him in a little more. Just gotta be careful of that. What a week it has been. Transmission went, and that again, as people that follow me know, I just replaced that last year around this time last year. Reverse went last week, and uh, yeah, I'm not happy about it. So I'm looking for a new service truck. Anybody knows of any, get a hold of me. Um, doesn't really have to be this style, but I kind of like all the boxes and stuff i definitely need utility boxes uh, i might not get one that's enclosed though not sure gotta fix that one too though and the other kicker was colin put his week notice in you know he's going to college whatever but uh so i don't have him i may he may finish out the week but uh, that's troubling too so on to the next one all right, so uh, I can't see from the cab to get in there. It's going to be a little tricky, so bear with it. All right, so I got one fork up on top and one just a little lower. I got to tilt it to the right and come down and get in there. The problem is I can't see nothing here. I can't see above it or below it. 
without another set of eyes. Yeah, I mean, I could pick up on this, which maybe I will. I just didn't want to scratch anything up. Then I, if I don't need to, I don't need to. I'm just trying to be careful, that's all. Always be sure, even though you have those up, to stick wood under there. You know, it never, uh, never hurts anybody to be extra safe. That's for sure. Let's see what we got. We're going to go over by these hydraulic lines. After yesterday, <laughs> we're going big blocking. We're extra, extra, extra safe. <laughs> Not having that. I had bad luck all week. Uh, now, if you anybody that follows me remembers, I replaced this because it was leaking. Man, look at the oil still. I mean, everything is just covered. Slippery to be up here. I looked at that up there. That's just a piece of uh, tape from when they painted it. They taped off that cylinder. I think it's cracked. I think the line blew. This line right here, which is my one inch line, it, it feeds it and returns it. By the way the box come down, it felt like that. See how that's chafing on there? I have several spots that pinch like that. You got to have to go through when I put this new line on and really make sure that ain't shaping. But I believe it's going to be right down in next to where I uh, fixed that before. Fixed that uh, other leak. Let's get up in there. I mean, by the looks of things, it is hard to tell. There's no blown uh, grease off down here. where it w There was so much pressure that this would be right clean if it was coming from there. I'm going to have to pressurize that tank with air. All right, just take an air hose, plug this off, pressurize this tank. Hopefully, we'll see a leak over there, spit out. So. nothing i don't know if the truck has to be on the pto has to be running for this to get to over there but obviously we can't do that because there's no fluid in it <sighs> well we'll take this air over there and clean up that line and see what's going on i think i found it right here i hit that tons of fluid coming out where I thought that pinch point was so uh that's it gotta take this line off get that line fed I mean that's exactly how it when I was in the cab I seen the fluid coming up not down where it would be the ram and if the ram blew out she dropped super fast this box was dropping like I was had it just regularly dropping but fluid was going everywhere instead of back in the tank gotta take that line off get it replaced so, I mean, a couple things here. Fortunate, it happened where it would happen. It was a clean fill site. Uh, there was, a, you know, 100 piles of dirt there already. We scooped the dirt up this morning uh, with the loader that was there and got rid of that dirt. So, thank God it happened there and not somewhere in the city where I got to deliver stone this week. It would have been a nightmare. Um, second thing, thank God it's not the 
cylinder itself and it's just that line it's pretty much an easy fix it's just a messy fix i mean you see all this oil and i've already pressure washed this down but you everything's saturated and you know i don't know if i could save these brakes or not i'm gonna i feel in here you know it feels good but uh, obviously everything got wet here i'm gonna soak these down with some cleaner and then uh pressure wash everything after i get it up and running so just a messy monday but uh at least it's fixable all right we're going to trace this line so obviously it goes from up here we're going to cut all our snips our, our uh, ties snip them i mean cut all them get it loose go underneath she was chafing right there too that was just a matter of time but right here was the culprit got a change of clothes playing mark on tv again all right let's get under here and snip it down on a piece of foam look how dirty and this is under here wow all that wetness is uh hydraulic oil we'll have to be pressure washing this okay this line here cut all these down we'll reroute some of these because i know she's chafing in other spots which isn't good like this line right here look at that shave right here wow and that's the one i gotta replace usually <laughs> usually the ones that are the worst are the ones you're not replacing so that so far it's working out right down there and it's this line right here that goes right into the pump right there all right we found her let's get her fixed All right, this is the line. I don't have to take this back off, and that's good, because that put all new seals in that. So, there might be a little fluid coming out of this. We'll go nice and easy. I doubt it, though. What am I saying? Ha! All the fluid's out. I was thinking in here, in the ram, but that's completely drained. There's no fluid in this rig at all. So we get this off one more fitting on the back side bottom side you should say and this will be good to go man i should have saw that kink i knew that i'll look at it inspect it but i when i took this off when i took this off to replace this i don't think i moved that much because it was pinned it's pinned in here See, that's all I had to do is I rotated that out. I don't know if you guys can see that. I rotated this out, and this was loose like that. But right there's the pinch point. Get that out. I don't know how I'm going to run that new one. I'll have to put something there to save it from chafing. Oh, yeah. She's a blowout. My Dirt Boss logo got all wrecked with fluid. Started taking the sticker off, of course. Well, we got her out. Lost all that footage of me getting it out under there. I don't know. I kept pressing play, but it was on camera mode, so I was just taking pictures. Unbelievable. It was quite hilarious the way uh, that come out. But anyways, this is uh, this has the fitting here where it spins, but this side doesn't. So it, we had a, you know, the whole thing has to rotate, rotate, rotate to get out. Hopefully, my new one will have a different fitting on that end. Um, then I just went like this. I kept spinning this and pulled it out but it was a nightmare with the wrenches to get that loose i had two feet on the tank two feet on the wrench prying with all my might using a few words that uh, i had to edit out but again it didn't take so here is the uh blowout as you see it was rubbing for a while right here and i uh replaced that valve over in there the o-rings and like i said this probably was rubbing then i didn't see it this was caked up at one inches one inch of gook and gunk and uh obviously i didn't see it because i would have replaced it but uh finally gave out blew out and or to that point had a couple other shave marks on here so off to the machine shop all right back from the machine shop got my brand new ski hose both ends are swiveling so I'll be able to take this right here, stick that in the PTO, and then this will be able to 
spin on same as this and then I could then that allows you to put this hose where it needs to be and then crank this down so much oil still dripping down it's all over the top of the, the sheet or truck too clean this up a little bit then we just gonna throw this plug in there adapter tighten that up and then my hose could go on there same as above so now she'll just go on like so and just put this on hand tight for now because that allows you to move it around like so get her hand tight then this will spin and you'll be able to maneuver it where you need it in the truck man the oil just keeps sweating down this truck it, the front looks horrible now and it keeps just dripping down it's amazing what it looks like underneath camera probably not picking up nothing but uh I got my self weeks and weeks and weeks of keep cleaning and I don't even know what I'm gonna put on that. But the problem here is you can see where it was shaping on that, on that metal there. It's so tight here, I can't get this in and I can't, you're never gonna rotate this and put a 90 on there. You don't have the depth here. It's a bad, bad setup. It's gonna be tight the neck, this one, even if I could get it in because this fitting, is a little fatter and I've been already messing with this for an hour but this fittings fatter so I can't this is gonna bend up like bend it and it's gonna want to rub right here because by the time I push it up where it is it's super tight in between that metal I tried rerouting it it's not gonna work I opened up these brackets a little bit and it looked like you know the factory did it too but I just bent them out a little more so it would rotate this tank. We'll see what it does. All right, after hours of getting it, of doing it, I finally got it in there. Um, I bent these brackets a little bit more, which gave me a little bit more room. There was no sense in trying to loosen them. I would have never got them in there. And, you know, there's a little piece of uh, material down here for shaping, so that gave me a little more room there that someone had put in in the past, maybe factory or whatnot. Here's a piece that I put in just right now. I'm gonna pop it back out because I'm not sure. I keep all my, you know, you always keep things like radiator hoses, old ones and all that, even if they have pinholes in them, you use them for stuff like this. I cut a hunk of it off and it acts as a shave stopper. And I'll put one here because you don't want this walking up onto here and then getting pinched. So it's gotta be about there. There must be vibration here. When this is moving, that's how it's getting shaved. I'll go down through, zip tie everything where it should be. Keep it away from the drive shaft, of course. More radiator hose. Just put it like so. Then you got to zippy, zip tie it down. And you'll be good to go. If my zip ties reach, which these are the longest ones I got. Might have to double them up. If they don't reach, just double it up. Then she will. One zip tie per spot. I'm not going to yarn these down. Because we don't want it to shave more. Just want it to be like so. We'll cut all these little tabs. Alright, time to fill with hydraulic oil. Well, after 17 gallons of fluid, she's going up. We'll lower her all the way down, see where we are for level. Get the air out of it. Coming back down. She should be coming with fluid now. Where are you? There you are. Let's see where she ends up. I'd like to get her. A little more than uh, halfway. I like to get it up into here because then when it's hot, it's just about up there. So it looks like we get it a little bit more. Put another gallon. That will give me 18 probably to there, 19. Hey, it might even take the whole thing. We'll play with that. I got, I got uh, 20 gallons anyway, so only took a couple out of that pail air will dissipate out but yeah we'll throw a couple more gallons in her 
All right, guys, I got everything uh, sprayed down with degreaser. I've been letting it soak for a little bit, and uh, everything's just saturated, and I'm going to let it bake on there for about 10, 15 minutes, and then I'm going to hit it with the hot water pressure washer. Yep, as you see, this decal starting to cut loose because all the chemical from um, the hydraulic fluid, and then this probably, who knows. 